a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Charlie Hebdo Shooting On 7 January 2015 at about 11.30 local time, two brothers, Saeed and Sharif Kouachi, forced their way into the offices of the French satirical weekly newspaper Charlie Hebdo in Paris. Armed with rifles and other weapons, they killed 12 people and injured 11 others. The gunmen identified themselves as belonging to the Islamist terrorist group Al-Qaeda's branch in Yemen, which took responsibility for the attack. Several related attacks followed in the Ile-de-France region, on 7 the 8th of January 2015. On the 9th of January 2015 was the Hypercacha Kosher supermarket siege, where a terrorist murdered four Jewish hostages and held 15 other hostages. France raised its vigiparate terror alert, and deployed soldiers in Ile de France and Picardy. A major manhunt led to the discovery of the suspects, who exchanged fire with police. The brothers took hostages at a signage company in Damart nen Herla on 9 January and were shot dead when they emerged from the building firing. On the 11th of January, about 2 million people, including more than 40 world leaders, met in Paris for a rally of national unity and 3.7 million people joined demonstrations across France. The phrase Je suis Charlie became a common slogan of support at the rallies and in social media. The staff of Charlie Hebdo continued with the publication, and the following issue print ran 7.95 million copies in six languages, compared to its typical print run of 60,000 in only French. Charlie Hebdo Satirical Works Charlie Hebdo is a French satirical weekly newspaper that features cartoons, reports, polemics, and jokes. The publication is irreverent, and stridently non-conformist in tone, is strongly secularist, anti-religious, and left-wing, publishing articles that mock Catholicism, Judaism, Islam, and various other groups as local and world news unfolds. The magazine was published from 1969 to 1981 and has been again from 1992 on. Charlie Hebdo has a history of attracting controversy. In 2006, Islamic organizations under French hate speech laws unsuccessfully sued over the newspaper's republication of the Gillens Post and cartoons of Mohammed. The cover of a 2011 issue retitled Charia Hebdo featured a cartoon of Mohammed, whose depiction is forbidden in some interpretations of Islam. The newspaper's office was firebombed and its website hacked. In 2012, the newspaper published a series of satirical cartoons of Muhammad, including nude caricatures. This came days after a series of violent attacks on U.S. embassies in the Middle East, purportedly in response to the anti-Islamic film Innocence of Muslims, prompting the French government to close embassies, consulates, cultural centers, and international schools in about 20 Muslim countries. Riot police surrounded the newspaper's offices to protect it against possible attacks. Cartoonist Stefan Charb Charbonnier had been the editor-in-chief of Charlie Hebdo since 2009. Two years before the attack he stated, We have to carry on until Islam has been rendered as banal as Catholicism. In 2013, Al-Qaeda added him to its most wanted list, along with three Gillens Post and staff members, Kurt Westergaard, Carsten Just and Fleming Rose. Being a sports shooter, Charb applied for permit to be able to carry a firearm for self-defense. The application went unanswered. Numerous violent plots related to the Gillens Post and cartoons were discovered, primarily targeting cartoonist Westergaard, editor Rose, and the property or employees of Gillens Post and other newspapers that printed the cartoons. Westergaard was the subject of several attacks and planned attacks and lives under police protection. On 1 January 2010, police used guns to stop a would-be assassin in his home, who was sentenced to nine years in prison. In 2010, three men based in Norway were arrested on suspicion of planning a terror attack against Gillens Poston or Kurt Westergaard. Two of them were convicted. In the United States, David Headley and Tahawa Hussein Rana were convicted in 2013 of planning terrorism against Gillens Poston. Laysite and blasphemy. In France, blasphemy law ceased to exist with progressive emancipation of the Republic from the Catholic Church between 1789 and 1830. In France, the principle of laysite, the separation of church and state, was enshrined in the 1905 law on the separation of the churches and the state. 
and in 1945 became part of the Constitution. Under its terms, the government and all public administrations and services must be religion-blind, and their representatives must refrain from any display of religion, but private citizens and organizations are free to practice and express the religion of their choice where and as they wish. In recent years there has been a trend towards a stricter interpretation of lay sight which will also prohibit users of public services from expressing their religion or even ban citizens from expressing their religion in public even outside the administration and public services. This restrictive interpretation is not supported by the initial law on lay sight and is challenged by the representatives of all the major religions. Authors, humorists, cartoonists and individuals have the right to satirize people, public actors and religions, a right which is balanced by defamation laws. These rights and legal mechanisms were designed to protect freedom of speech from local powers, among which was the then powerful Catholic Church in France. Though images of Muhammad are not explicitly banned by the Quran itself, prominent Islamic views have long opposed human images, especially those of prophets. Such views have gained ground among militant Islamic groups. Accordingly, some Muslims take the view that the satire of Islam, of religious representatives, and above all of Islamic prophets is blasphemy and Islam punishable by death. According to the BBC, France has seen the apparent desire of some younger, often disaffected children or grandchildren of immigrant families not to conform to Western, liberal lifestyles including traditions of religious tolerance and free speech. Salafi scholar Muhammad al-Munajjid indicates that the Islamic concept of Gira requires that Muslims protect Muhammad from blasphemy. Charlie Hebdo Headquarters On the morning of 7 January 2015, a Wednesday, Charlie Hebdo staff were gathered at 10 rue Nicolas Apport in the 11th arrondissement of Paris, for the weekly editorial meeting starting around 10.30. The magazine had moved into an unmarked office, at this address following the 2011 firebombing of their previous premises. Around 11.30, two armed, and hooded men burst first into the wrong address at number 6 rue Nicolas Apport, shouting, Is this Charlie Hebdo? and threatening people. After realizing their mistake and firing a bullet through a glass door, the two men left for number 10. There, they encountered cartoonist Corinne Coco, Ray outside. They used threats to force her to key in the passcode to the door. The men sprayed the lobby with gunfire upon entering. The first victim was maintenance worker Frederic Boisseau, who was killed as he sat at the reception desk. The gunman forced Ray at gunpoint to lead them to a second-floor office, where 15 staff members were having an editorial meeting, Charlie Hebdo's first news conference of the year. Reporter Laurent Leger said they were interrupted by what they thought was the sound of a firecracker, the gunfire from the lobby, and recalled, We still thought it was a joke. The atmosphere was still joyous. The gunman burst into the meeting room and called out Charb's name to target him before opening fire. The shooting lasted 5 to 10 minutes. The gunman aimed at the journalists' heads and killed them. During the gunfire, Ray survived uninjured by hiding under a desk, from where she witnessed the murders of Valinsky and Kabu. Leger also survived by hiding under a desk as the gunman entered. Other witnesses reported that the gunmen identified themselves as belonging to Al-Qaeda in Yemen. Psychoanalyst Elsa Kayat, a French columnist of Tunisian Jewish descent, was killed. Another female columnist present at the time, crime reporter Sigeline Vinson, survived. One of the shooters aimed at her, but spared her, saying, I'm not killing you, because you are a woman, and telling her to read the Quran. She said he left shouting, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Escape An authenticated video surfaced on the internet that shows two gunmen and a police officer, Ahmed Murabet who is wounded and lying on a sidewalk after an exchange of gunfire. This took place near the corner of Boulevard Richard Lenore and Rumafl, east of the main crime scene. One of the gunmen ran towards the policeman and shouted, Did you want to kill us? The policeman answered, No. It's fine, boss, and raised his hand toward the gunman, who then gave the policeman a fatal shot to the head at close range. Sam Kiley, of Sky News, concluded from the video that the two gunmen were military professionals who likely had combat experience, saying that the gunmen were exercising infantry tactics such as moving in, mutual support, and were firing aimed, single round shots at the police officer. 
He also stated that they were using military gestures and were familiar with their weapons, and fired carefully aimed shots, with tight groupings. The gunman then left the scene, shouting, We have avenged the Prophet Muhammad. We have killed Charlie Elbdo. They escaped in a getaway car, and drove to Port de Pantin, hijacking another car and forcing its driver out. As they drove away, they ran over a pedestrian and the shot at responding police officers. It was initially believed that there were three suspects. One identified suspect turned himself in at a charleville mezier police station. Seven of the Kuachi brothers' friends and family were taken into custody. Jihadist flags and Molotov cocktails were found in an abandoned getaway car, a black Citroen C3. Motive Charlie Erbdo had attracted attention for its controversial depictions of Muhammad. Hatred for Charlie Hedos cartoons which made jokes about Islamic leaders as well as the Islamic prophet Muhammad, is considered to be the principal motive for the massacre. Michael Morell, former deputy director of the CIA, suggested that the motive of the attackers was clear, trying to shut down a media organization that lampooned the prophet Muhammad. In March 2013, Al-Qaeda's branch in Yemen, commonly known as Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, released a hit list in an edition of their English-language magazine Inspire. The list included Stéphane Charbonnier and others whom Agap accused of insulting Islam. On 9 January, Agap claimed responsibility for the attack in a speech from Agap's top Sharia cleric Harit bin Ghazi al-Nadari, citing the motive as revenge for the honor of Muhammad. Uninjured and absent Several people at the meeting were unharmed, including book designer Gerard Gaylard, who was a guest, and staff members, and Eric Port held. The cartoonist Coco was coerced into letting the murderers into the building, and was not harmed. Several other staff members were not in the building at the time of the shooting, including medical columnist Patrick Pellew, cartoonists Reynold, Luz, Luzia and, and film critic, who were late for work, cartoonist Willem, who never attends, editor-in-chief Gerard Bayard, and journalist Zine Belrazoui who were on holiday, journalist, who was at a funeral, and comedian and columnist Matthew Medinian, Luz arrived in time to see the gunman escaping. Biography Until the Erbdo Attack Police quickly identified brothers Saeed Kouachi and Sharif Kouachi as the main suspects. French citizens born in Paris to Algerian immigrants, the brothers were orphaned at a young age, at the ages of 12 and 10, they came home from school one day to find their mother, pregnant, for a sixth time, lying dead in their flat. Neighbors presumed suicide, but officially her death was recorded as caused by illness. The two brothers were placed in a foster home in Rennes. After two years, they were moved to an orphanage in Coise in 1994, along with a younger brother and an older sister. The brothers moved to Paris around 2000. Sharif, also known as Abu Issan, was part of an informal gang that met in the Parc des Buttes Charmonnes in Paris to perform military-style training exercises, and sent would-be jihadists to fight for Al-Qaeda in Iraq after the 2003 invasion. Sharif was arrested at age 22 in January 2005 when he and another man were about to leave for Syria, at the time a gateway for jihadists wishing to fight US troops in Iraq. He went to Flory Morogi's prison, where he met Hamadi Koulibaly. In prison, they found a mentor, Jamal Bagal, who had been sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2001 for his part in a plot to bomb the U.S. Embassy in Paris. Bagal had once been a regular worshipper at Finsbury Park Mosque in London and a disciple of the radical preachers Abu Hamza and Abu Qatada. Upon leaving prison, Sharif Kouachi married and got a job in a fish market on the outskirts of Paris. He became a student of Farid ben Yetu, a radical Muslim preacher, at the Adawa Mosque in the 19th arrondissement of Paris. Kouachi wanted to attack Jewish targets in France, but ben Yetu told him that France, unlike Iraq, was not a land of jihad. On 28 March 2008, Sharif was convicted of terrorism and sentenced to three years in prison, with 18 months suspended for recruiting fighters for militant Islamist Abu Musab al-Zarqawi's group in Iraq. He said outrage, 
at the torture of inmates by the U.S. Army at Baghdad Central Prison in Abu Ghraib inspired him to help Iraq's insurgency. French judicial documents state Hamadi Koulibaly and Sharif Kouachi traveled with their wives in 2010 to central France to visit Jamil Begal. In a police interview in 2010, Koulibaly identified Sharif as a friend he had met in prison and said they saw each other frequently. In 2010, the Kouachi brothers were named in connection with the plot to break out from jail another Islamist, Smeine Tali Belkasem. For lack of evidence, they were not prosecuted. Belkasem was one of those responsible for the 1995 Paris Metro in bombings that killed eight people. From 2009 to 2010, Saeed Kouachi visited Yemen on a student visa to study at the Sana Institute for the Arabic Language. There, According to a Yemeni reporter who interviewed Saeed, he met and befriended Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalab. The perpetrator of the attempted bombing of Northwest Airlines Flight 253 later in 2009. Also according to the reporter, the two shared an apartment for one or two weeks. In 2011, Saeed returned to Yemen for a number of months and trained with Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula militants. According to a senior Yemeni intelligence source, he met Al-Qaeda preacher Anwar al-Awlaki in the southern province of Shabwa. Sharif Kouachi told BFM TV that he had been funded by a network loyal to Anwar al-Awlaki, who was killed by a drone strike in 2011 in Yemen. According to U.S. officials, the U.S. provided France with intelligence in 2011 showing the brothers received training in Yemen. French authorities monitored them until the spring of 2014. During the time leading to the Charlie Hebdo attack, Saeed lived with his wife and children in a block of flats in Reims. Neighbors described him as solitary. The weapons used in the attack were supplied via the Brussels underworld. According to the Belgian press, a criminal sold Amadi Koulibaly the rocket-propelled grenade launcher and Kalashnikov rifles that the Kouachi brothers used. In an interview between Sharif Kouachi and Igor Sahiri, one of France's BFM TV journalists, Sharif stated that, We are not killers. We are defenders of the Prophet. We don't kill women. We kill no one. We defend the Prophet. If someone offends the Prophet then there is no problem. We can kill him. We don't kill women. We are not like you. You are the ones killing women. And children in Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. This isn't us. We have an honor code in Islam. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?